Happy Friday all, welcome along to In The Know. Myself, Dave Orton, sitting in for Ross Briley, who I believe is somewhere in Gran Canaria sampling the finest vegetables known to man. It won't be lost on anyone that it's April Fool's Day today. Cannot wait to hear from you. This is the live interactive show, of course, with Coral, our sponsors. What a whopping weekend it is for them as well. Get your chat in if you're watching on YouTube. Don't forget to like and subscribe on that. We're going to cover six races from air for you on their Saturday card. Of course, 3.35 being the biggie, 23 runners due to go to post in a fiercely competitive Scottish Grand National. Cannot wait for that. Also, two from Newbury. And at the end, we'll give you the naps as well. Price boosts all along the way with Coral. Uh, let's get, shall we actually go to their representative first? Dave Stevens joins us. Dave, welcome. Good evening, Dave. Uh, welcome. Big pair of shoes to fill with Ross Briley. He'll be watching, though. Make no mistake. He'll be seeing what the competition is like. I know what Ross is like. <laughs> well, actually, fun enough, I've noticed a few people in the chat saying that as well. I believe he's something like size eight, so I've already got the run on him there. Dave, huge weekend. Come to you uh, mm. in a minute, but we're not often used to this early, are we, in April? I mean, it's April the 1st, and here we are, Scottish Grand National before Aintree. Yeah, and this is very much a one-off. I think it last happened in the 1800s. Better memories than me will be able to confirm that. It's just the way Easter falls. It's not where this race should be. It's not where this race will be next year and hopefully for the next 100 years. We've got a slightly smaller field than normal because of the proximity to Aintree. 23 runners now. We've had one come out, but that's not a problem. There are reasons for it. It's still a really good renewal of the Coral Scottish National and one that it's just great to be back. I was at air today. Seven winning favourites. So the punters were all leaving very happy. Us poor bookmakers, we need a change of luck tomorrow. Yes, indeed. And I hope that the room is airtight, Dave, because the last time you were on, you had a rather nasty incident with a wasp, didn't you? <laughs> yes, it's funny how many people, including some very good friends of mine, enjoyed me being stung by a wasp during the Cheltenham Festival, which was a one-off. They say never work with animals and children, but let me tell you, that wasp ain't stinging anyone else now. Well, after this, they'll be telling you not to work with Robbie Wilders, I think, as well. The anti-postman comes back. You've done this show before, Robbie, haven't you? I have, yeah. I was on with Ross last time, so... Different mix up in the studio this time. Uh, every cloud, yourself. I suppose. Yeah. Every cloud. Uh, how are you homing in on this? The anti postman, the yeah, latest. I've had, I've had a couple of wages at air early in the week. And, uh, Have I've, you? Yeah. One in the Scottish Champion. Don't tell us now. I want to give away. And one in the uh, novice handicap chase as well. All right. Good stuff. Already looking away. I can see the chat filling up. Let's have some fun, though, shall we? We'll be with you till around about 7 pm. Shall we go to Reading? Tom Siegel, I believe, price wise extraordinaire, joins us. Hello, boys. How are you? Yeah, yeah. Looking forward to it. Great race. Uh, big one tomorrow. Reading Barnsley. Whoever wins or goes up, <laughs> probably stay up and go down. But the, the Scottish National is on as well. Yeah, Tom, you won't actually be watching the race, will you? But you have been honing in on it this week. <laughs> of course, Members Club, you know, if you belong to that out there, you'll always see Tom's tips coming on at 6pm. You'll know that by now. You're going for two in the Scottish Nash. I'm delighted with one of them. Don't reveal them yet, though, for people that are, are waiting in. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm a big believer in having a couple in a, in these big field handicaps. I'd prefer to back a couple to win than uh, I know people tell me that all these great each way terms, I should be backing them each way as well. But I like backing a couple to win. That's what I've always done. And that's what I will be doing in the uh, Scottish Nash tomorrow. I tell you what, Tom, you seem like you're in quite a good mood. I watch these shows every now and then. I don't know whether it's me or Wilders or Dave. It's the thought of the price boost coming your way, Tom. I can tell you in a good mood. Well, you know, I'm pretty good mood. I've got the I've got the uh, World Cup draw on behind me. We've drawn Iran and USA so far, so we're doing all right in the draw. And uh, we'll see what happens uh, with the Scottish Nash. Oh well, well it, it, maybe there should be a draw for the Scottish Nash next year. I don't know, like, like reserves and all that sort of thing. Of course, right, we are on the national trail, but shall we go up to where? Shall we get on with some business? A reminder then: send it in. This is an interactive show. I'll do my very best to steer along, like Ross usually does each week, and give you a shout out. Let me know what wins the Scottish National, and of course, anything on the supporting cars. There you go then. One fifteen at air. My goodness me! Look who's favourite there, Sebastopol. Did you see him? Good come at Kempton last time out. Does he follow up? We'll find out from the panel after Dave Stevens gives us a lightly take on the market. Yeah, I suppose the market, Dave, really does revolve around the, the second favourite here. Dubai Days was one of those seven winning favourites here today. Be interesting to see whether Nick Alexander and the team decide to go again. If they do, I could see, obviously, him shortening a little bit. Sebastopol, though, will start favourite, I'm sure. And what I thought was interesting was Melistic. Uh, Brian Hughes, he almost goes unheralded as he draws in on 200 winners. What a season he's had. And he teams up with Peter Niven 
another old stalwart of the northern scene here in this one. I thought Malistic could perhaps be a shortener as well. But yeah, we just need to know if Dubai Days is going to be making a quick reappearance. Yes, I guess that will make a difference on the race. Uh, Rob, you had a look at this one? Sebastian uh, yeah. he's a right on monkey, isn't he? Yeah, I think he's gone up £8 for winning quite a quite a soft race at Kempton. I don't, yeah, I don't really like that. Um, I think he's short enough. Um, Dubai Days, I think there's every chance he might turn out because our viewers might remember that last year the Inval ran the day before and then went on to win this race and he did that in 2019 as well. Um, so he, he might back up, but either way, I'm, I'm with Dave. I like Malistic. Um, he was actually in the grade two at this meeting last year behind All Mankind. He was actually travelling arguably just as well as All Mankind, about three out. Still got but beaten about he just half Got beaten 19 lengths, is. but Tamrock de Mata and he had him well beaten. That's quite a good horse. Um, he just didn't seem to get home over two and a half miles for me. Mm. And uh, dropped back down to two to two is going to suit. Um, he was off for quite a long time. He didn't make his comeback until Doncaster earlier this month. Uh, he was going well. He unseated uh, early enough out, but he was going nicely there. Um, that The loose horse actually did run all the way around, so I like to think he still had a bit of a race. And um, yeah, I could see the money coming for that one, so Malistic for me. I must admit, Tom, I had a look at him as well and found him hard to kick out the frame. If I was going to have a headline tip in this, it would probably be him. There's a lot of handicapped horses that look like they've reached their limit, unless you can see something different here. Give us a help. No, it's a tricky one, isn't it? Uh, I mean, I get Malista. It just hasn't, you know, he hasn't finished a race. I mean, he, he, he was, he was travelling well in a, probably a better race than this when he uh, when he unseated last time. But it was long. It's about a long time off, hasn't it? We haven't seen him finish a race yet. So, uh, for me, I don't know. I thought it was too tricky. I thought Sebastopol was very solid. I know he's a bit funny, but I also thought Gold de Bois for the sort of local trainers. I would imagine this is local trainer and owner Raymond Anderson mm. Green. They'll have had this. That have had this on their mind for for many many weeks. I thought he was well handicapped on old form, so maybe I'd throw a throw a few. But it's as you boys point out, Dubai days, Coach Cars, a few of them in there ran today, didn't they? So I don't know if Coach Cars is already out. He might already be out. But uh, uh, without knowing what Dubai days is doing, it's a tricky one to get too involved in uh, at the moment. I'm leaning to Gold Dubois, but I'll have to wait and see what the market is in the morning, really. I'll tell you what, it was good to see Platinum Card winning for Gordon Elliott earlier on the card there today because it, I think it was naught from 60. Yeah, mental, I saw Ridiculous. that. Ridiculous. Couldn't believe it, yeah. But listen, you can't keep a good man down, Rob, as you well know. You can't. Yeah. Um, Sebastopol, should we have a quick chat about him? Because a lot of people are going to be looking at this. One on the bridle pretty much last time yeah. at Kempton. And the second, and the needs... Gary Moore horse has hosed up since, hasn't it? But yeah. He is, he's a... He's a... Drop, drop me mic, but... Continue. I mean, budget is everything on this show, Robbie, um, as I can tell by your top. Um, French connection, mate. I don't know what you're talking about. It's quite an expensive bit of kit. Like so. about to go do some yoga or something like that, which I, I dare say you do to get your mind into the game. We so all should do a bit of yoga. Do you, really? Yeah. Well, I'm not sure. No. That's like Can't touch your toes, back and no? firm up, really. That's about all I can do. Um, Sebastopol, yeah. then. One to take on me with a laser. Yeah, day. absolutely. Um, I mean, you look for his form. He was he was beaten only four and three quarter lengths by third time lucky. He's obviously... A, Probably grade two novice chaser, but there was a faller there and he was kind of flattered by change of headgear to First time lucky well. wasn't all out. Yeah, that too. Um, probably go win off the track. I feel now. like his best form is on completely good ground yeah. and it's good to soft now. There's a little bit of rain there. It might ease up a little bit more. Um, I think there's enough reason to take him on. All right, so shall we remind ourselves of the tip setting? The 115 tricky race, but funnily enough, three of us are agreeing on Brian Hughes taking out the first. That would probably have some ramifications, I imagine, going forward as he closes in on that 200 winner this season. What a season he has had. Didn't even take part in the Cheltenham Festival. Mental, isn't it? Uh, OK, uh, and that's me, Robbie, Dave, and Tom, remind us what you've got on top. I sort of had a share yeah. of your tips. Yeah, Gold de Bois would be just on top at the moment, but uh, as I say, it's not it's not a race I've really uh, with with the, the doubts about these horses running or not. It's hard to hard to really get too involved in them. All right, okay, all right. I don't think that's going to be making Tom's tips tomorrow. Then shall we have a look at the novice champion handicap chase over three miles, the one fifty? And I tried to do a little bit of homework on this. The first thing we should say is that uh, Dan Skelton's sail away has come out with a vet certificate that he got infected foot. And I would have had him on top uh, because he's getting a nice chunk of weight away from Dusart, Dave. I get the feeling we'll go in multiples tomorrow. Hendo's already struck at the meeting in the first race, hasn't he? Yeah, Nicky. I mean, Nicky expressed some concerns about the, 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 sort of the, the ground coming into this meeting, but it hasn't stopped him having runners here. And it's obviously interesting as well that Nico de Boinville is travelling all the way up here. And he's a very solid two-to-one favourite, was bigger, was three-to-one yesterday. 
been gradually shortening all day, five to two, nine to four. So no surprise, he will start favourite, obviously, having run fifth at the festival. Uh, one I like is going the other way in the market, which I'm sure is purely coincidental, but it's Doyen Breed um, for another trainer who targets his meeting, Sandy Thompson. Um, he's been second four times out of five runs this season, so he deserves, I say he deserves one, he's, maybe he's just not quite good enough, but those, some of those seconds have been behind some good sorts, three under through five, a uh, horse of Kim Bailey's in the Reynolds Town, who typically the name forgets me for that race there. And I'm just hoping, I say he's now out to around seven to one. We don't need any more coming. I'm just having a look for the each way turns. We're still three places at the moment, I think. So, yeah, hoping no more come out and doy Embry for me each way. It's interesting. Uh, when you pick up your papers tomorrow morning or in your members club this evening, you'll see it's at Sandy Thompson, of course, who does target this meeting extremely well for the first time this season. He'll get his ground. Like a lot of Sandy's horses, you tend to have them down as slot monkeys, don't you? But um, they stay very well, and there is that that's that Reynolds Town form. Robbie, concur or? Yeah. Mm, um, well, sorry, oh, with Doyen Breed. I, yeah. I get the angle, yeah. I'd be concerned that that Ascot race might have taken a little bit out of him. But um, no, I also want to take on Dusart for that reason, uh, running at Cheltenham. 17 days after the... Brown advisory. Right, let's chat about That's this, a shall quick we? enough turnaround for this me. This is going to give us a steer on how punters are going to react yeah. to entry next week as well, isn't it? Because Dusar, I, I, I had a look at this race. The last horse that actually tried to do the Cheltenham to air sort of double in this yeah. race, if you think it's usually a longer a longer gap, yeah. was a horse called Barney Gwarn. And he was... Barney Dwan. Dwan, Dwan, that's yeah, it. Yeah, Fergal O'Brien. Dwan, yeah. that's his name. With a D, yeah. Yeah, it, it, he unseated as he was still cruising in the race. And the other one before that was a horse of Alan King's that actually won the race. I don't remind myself of what he was called. He's still running, actually. La Belle de Zobo. Oh, yeah, I remember him. 2017. It can be done. can be done. What sort of race did he have, though, at Cheltenham, in the Brown Advisor? What about a half race? I mean, it says soft there, but it looked to get really testing on the second day at Cheltenham, didn't it? Mm. He was sort of running um, off the bride a long way yeah. out. He was on the inside. If you watch back... I, I don't... That, that closing replay on the members' club, he's actually coming back again? Yeah. <sighs> I've got a feeling he might just win this. Tom, what do you reckon? Do so. Am I mad? No, you're not mad at all. I mean, Ronnie Bartlett, isn't it? Scottish owner. He'd love to have the winner. He loves it up in air. Uh, I can't believe they're coming up. You know, if, if, if Nicky thought he wasn't right, he wouldn't be running. I think he's got, a, I think it could be a class angle, but it's a really good race. I mean, Sounds Russian has been really impressive. As you say, Doyen Breed ran well in the Reynolds Town. Reynolds Town. Uh, Max McNeil's, Seems to be running all his, wants to have more winners up there than anywhere else at the moment. He's I.K. Brunel, is sort of ran all right last time and won the time before. I thought it was a really, really good race. I thought the Golden Rebel had a chance. That was a good race he fell in last time. I think you can give them all a chance, Dave, to be honest. I think Dusart's the class of the field. But as you say, do we, how, how's he going to react to uh, coming back from Cheltenham last time? I personally would probably just go for Sounds Russian. I've been really impressed with him the last twice. Ruth Jefferson's horse, uh, People forget how well the Jeffersons do with good horses. Uh, she's sort of gone on the radar since uh, that good horse left to go to Christian Williams. But uh, they're, they're pretty shrewd, shrewd, shrewd operation, that. And I think he's a good horse going places. And I, I would be in sound, the Sounds Russian camp, I think. We have no idea how good he is, do we? Every time he's got into a race of offences this season, he's absolutely hosed up. Yeah, he's definitely tempting. I, I don't know. It's, I, I do just... worry about the ground for Sounds Russian. He's made his improvement on heavy. Will it be testing enough for him? They were talking about watering up there, Dave. What's the weather like there today? Do you think they're opening the taps? And I haven't seen anything on our website, I must admit. I, I mean, don't don't quote me, but I think the plan was not to water. It's been a dry day. It was good to solve the jockey's rule report, and it is perfect ground after the first race. So I don't think they need to do anything with it. Just looking at the chat, a guy called Dan Ramirez comes on the chat and says, is that a flying chair in Dave Stevens' hotel room? <laughs> It's like the <laughs> elevating around. Bees, wasps, flying chairs, Dave gets it all. I'll tell you what, the chat is really, really uh, warming up actually now. Dusart will give the way to these, says Alex Mansfield. Uh, okay, should have taken the price yesterday. I've got the feeling he might just drift a little bit though. I'm going with Dusart. Nicky yeah, it's Anderson, quite interesting that he's the highest rated novice running on the card and there's a grade two novice chase later. Well, you might, I suppose. And is he necessarily a complete free miler? I mean, he placed in the grade he looks one a at Aintree two miles. Yeah. yeah, fair enough. Yeah. I, I want to take him on. Um, I put up Sail Away and the Gold Rebel, the Golden Rebel at the start of the week. Um, Sail Away, I actually fancy Sail Away a bit more. He was on £13 mm. better terms at Dusart, but he's obviously got something wrong with his foot. Uh, yeah, the Golden Rebel, um, a bit like Malistic. He did he did fall last time, but he was, he was going well enough, and he was actually really well back that day. 
And uh, the the winner, Earn Rivers, come out and run a couple of stormers since. I think he's rated in the 150s now. Um, that, that looks a good race. Don Cast, who's quite progressive before. I always like to keep fresh horses on side at this meeting. Uh, some more likely race horses this time of year. I mean, a lot of horses have had a lot of runs and they're going to be over the top. So, yeah, the Golden Rebel for me. I wonder if what you're thinking out there in YouTube world and wherever you're watching, is this a meeting where you're looking for plan A or are some horses coming with plan Z next to their name? I don't know. We're going to find out, aren't we? Okay, that is the 150. We'll move on. We'll see whether Dusart can pull it off in Nicky Anderson. Then good luck wherever you're playing. Uh, the 225 comes up next. And this is a real cracker. Every year, This we've got some characters coming back into it, haven't we? And I guess we're going to find out about the Cheltenham form. None more so, Dave Stevens, in the Coral Scottish champion hurdle because West Cork ran a belter in the county. Yeah, obviously come up against State Man that day. State Man was too good for that county hurdle field, but West Court finished obviously fourth that day. Dan Scouton's been in good form up here today. You wouldn't have any concerns about the form of his string. But I think this is a really nine runners, but you can make a cases for a few of them. And, and I'm not even sure West Court will start favourite. One more for the road. Uh, he was fourth in the Imperial Cup. Milkwood obviously bidding to win the race again, I think. Sea Pigeon might have been the last horse to do that. Uh, Anna Benin has been the one for money this uh, last 24 hours, the Irish horse there. And Barrichello I liked again for that man, Brian Hughes, Donald McCain team. So I think it's a really interesting, intriguing, trappy race, dare I say it. But West Court currently favourite, but an uneasy favourite, I'd say. Sea Pigeon got a mention there. Uh, wow, there you go. All right, Tom, I'm assuming you have tipped in this race tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, I like. I wanted to take on all of them. Uh, I, by a process of elimination, I came up with one. West Cork obviously ran in, uh, ran at Cheltenham, had a hard race after a break. One for, one more for the road. His intended target was the Betfair hurdle. He had to miss that. Came back at Sandown. Ground was wrong. Look, got absolutely mullered. So, you know, it, what sort of form is he going to be in? Not sure. Milkwood has been off since, you know, he ran in the Galway hurdle. Then he ran once over fences and we haven't seen him since October. He's off. Anna Bonina obviously has a massive chance on last year's form, but I don't think she's in anything like the form she was last year. I thought she got run over at Musselburgh last time. I know she's better off with the weights, but not sure. Barrichello has clearly in good form and has got a good, uh, has got uh, Brian Hughes on. Not quite sure how well handicapped he is. I, came, I ended up on socialist agenda, boys. I thought he's won five of his seven races. He thrashed Anna Bonina last time. He's, better, he's uh, much worse off at the weights. I think it's 15 pounds. He's got the pieces on. I just think he's going to run a really big race. He couldn't have won easier at Muscle, where he had his ears pricked all the way up, up the home straight. I just thought he's the one horse there that's getting better. It's definitely improving. He's won five of his seven races. He'll like the ground. 14 to one. Jobs are good. He does seem a big I price. Think... I'm not going to lie with that. I, I think it was the swing at the weights that put me on Tana Benina, Tom, uh, to be honest. That was on Feb 5th from memory up at, up at Muscle, and it was definitely what it mm. says good ground. That was winter good ground. Yeah. I think she needs this sort of ground. I get what you're saying with Anna Benina. I, Every time I, I John hoping... McConnell turns up, he tends to win a race in England, doesn't he? Oh, he's very good in these, in these Scottish races as well. I mean, I was very interested in Anna Benina. I'm surprised to see 11 to 2. That Are we agreeing on this? No, no, well, not those prior. I was expecting more like 10 to. She was going to be my second selection, but my first selection is Barrichello. Um, I think this horse is quite unlucky not to be unbeaten this season. Uh, the only time he lost, he lost the odds of 1 to 5, but. You can't take that completely at face value because he wasn't facing the right way when the starter let him go. And it looked, for my eye, that that was quite harsh that he actually... He was fives on that day. He was fives. He's been beaten four lengths by a bunch of no-hopers, but he lost 25 lengths at the start. And it made up so much ground early on. To He likes to race prominently. And that just cost him in the finish. Um, you know, he's beaten good risk at all in the first handicap he ran. He was giving him six pounds. That's, that's excellent form. Uh, he's already won a list race over hurdles. He's right 134. I just feel like the Newcastle run in February was going to really tee him up for this. I feel a lot of these, this has kind of not been their long-term target. They've, they've sort of had bigger uh, races in mind, whereas Barrichello, this has been earmarked a long way, a long way out. And uh, what was he 15 to two? Yeah, that that'll do me. This was an anti-postman. It, it was, yeah. That annoying pop-up that comes up on my screen. <laughs> yeah, can't week. get rid of it. With can your you? face on it. Yeah, can't yeah. get rid of it. No, that, oh, right. he's, he was a proper twice the last year. What do I seem to remember? Yeah. He? Absolutely turn yeah. himself inside out. Horses like Alkamar are quite interesting as well. Varda Rev managed to somehow win again last time. Our friend uh, Graham Robway likes that one. This is a proper race. When are these price boosts are coming in, Dave? I'm, I, I get told we're having these boosts left, right and centre. Should I be coming to you for one of these now? I mean, I've got well, no let's, why don't we? Why don't we? Now you've teed it up. Let's go for one. And it's that man, Brian Hughes. Say, hey, I'm a Barrichello fan here. Obviously, I like Malistic in the first. Brian Hughes could step closer to his 200. Two or more winners at 
uh, air tomorrow. It was six to one, now eight to one. So if, like me, you're a Brian Hughes fan here tomorrow, well, I'm a Brian Hughes fan every day, but here tomorrow there, eight to one, two or more winners. What do you reckon, Tom? Uh, what do Don't I reckon? Ask him. We've got Scotland and Wales as well, it will, as well as Iran and USA. In the draw. Oh, yeah, in the draw. Oh, about the <laughs> prize boost. Go to prize boost, man. It's one of the best ones I've ever seen. Well done, Tim. <laughs> uh, it was Matt Trounce, this one. <laughs> oh, Matt, even genius. Oh, the traders getting some pelters. Uh, I mean, he's going to. Uh, I could easily. Quite a good price. That's not bad, is yeah, it? I'm not one for enhanced. I get told that these are often, you know, they give him pelters, Dave and Simon. They could have upped that to 13 to 2. I reckon some punters would take a bit of that. Well, it's gone up to 8 to 1, yeah. isn't it? Get stuck in. Yeah, all right. Brian used to have two. So, realistic, we think. Barracello here. Yep. Gordon's unit's already. Well, done. I mean, I've already put up two Hughes horses, so. For that reason. All right, fair enough. All right, they've suddenly, put, they've suddenly changed it to 10 to 1 now, they know you. <laughs> <laughs> enough, enough for that, mate. <laughs> All right, we're just starting to liven up. Welcome along to In the Know then this Friday evening. If you're watching, yes, I'm not Ross Briley. It is April Fool's Day. It's Dave Orton, joined by the anti postman. Called yourself that, didn't you? It still plagues well, me. Well, it has caught on. Not even Tom named himself prize wise, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Who I still don't know who the original price was. Well, oh, don't there was, a, we, there was a couple before, before believe it or not, but they've all been they've all been he's, well. So you're saying about. he's a B Tech price wise? No, I'm certainly not saying that. We need to no. get a moniker for you, Dave, as well, don't we? Like a little nickname or something. I'm, I'm I, I know that there are them around, and Tom probably has them for you. But this is a family show, of course. Yeah, let's not open that one up to the floor, please. <laughs> <laughs> all right, great stuff. That was the Scottish champion hurdle. Let's see if we can get anything up in the chat. Let's have a look and see who might be. Uh, winning this. Uh, Milkwood will slaughter this lot. Just a word for Milkwood, Tom. I mean, he's got his ground again. He hasn't had much racing. Can he do it back? And what put you off him? Is it the mark? Uh, nothing, nothing. It's just a price thing, isn't it? He's, right. he's fourth one and we, he hasn't finished a race this season, as I say. He's a bit like Malistic, isn't he? He ran over fences, fell over. We haven't seen him since. You know, he was probably a bigger price to win this last year when he was in tremendous form. So, you know, that's the only thing. I mean, it's a price thing. I'm very happy to see him win. Mm. Great. And my doggy's saying hello. 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 Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Some guy on the chat called Jesus. Uh, interesting name. Says Milkwood will milk these. Needs to get a bit better. Could be there. Jesus. Could be Jesus. Yeah, could be. got some Spanish people on. Mm. Get in touch. We've got one. I'm a Watford supporter. We've got a Jesus actually at Watford, so you're probably right. Okay, all right. Shall we go on to the three o'clock then as we whittle through the air card? We've still got the Scottish Grand National, Coral Scottish Grand National to come your way. At the moment, though, it's the champion novices chase grade two, and I thought this was the head scratcher of the entire this day. This is Robbie a Wilders. diabolical grade two, isn't it? Diabolical? Future champions. You've got a future at this I'm not game, seeing any future. I'm not seeing any future champions here. Hmm... Uh, OK, on, on that sort of bombshell, let's go to Dave. And uh, I would be surprised if Do Your Job doesn't go off fave here, Dave. But I suppose if Brian Hughes is going to have those two winners, maybe it'll be Manila Drama. Yeah, and also the fact that I very tentatively am going to tip Do Your Job, won't do his market chances, any prospect. I thought this was a, another, I've used the word trappy already tonight, I'm going to use it again. Uh, do Your Job, he gets the trip. I'm hoping there's more to come. There will need to be more to come. But yeah, I... <laughs> Listen, I couldn't tip anything strongly in this, but I just came down on the side of do your job. He wasn't favoured at the time, actually, when I looked at it earlier. So better judges than me clearly fancy him. Mm, Tom, let's come to you then. Uh, again, is this one that's made the, the paper tomorrow or a bit too trappy for you as well? No, to, undoubtedly too trappy for me. I think if you read the, the quotes in the part, I think all the trainers fancy all their horses. I think every <laughs> every single one of them is they're coming there thinking they're going to win. Uh Personally, I thought Il Ridotu could bounce back. I was really impressed with him at Newbury. Uh, he seemed to be sort of not really that fancied at Cheltenham last time, but I thought he ran all right. Uh, Manella Drama's clearly got... They've all got great chances, haven't they? Uh, my tentative selection is Il Ridotu, but like like you say, it's very trappy, and I can literally see any of them winning. Mm, all Mankind, as Robbie told us earlier on, on the show, won this last year. It does tend to go some pretty decent horses. Uh, Edouard has won it in Pasha de Polder. Paul Nichols had eight runners in the past 10 years. Three of them have won. Il Rodoto, I don't know whether he's just... I backed him in the Grand Annual. Mm. And we th who, was I, who was I with? It might have been Keith Melrose, actually, I was watching him with. I can't remember him. He was coming on the outside, coming mm. on the outside. He just, he, he just tried to make that mid-race move. I don't know. Has he had a hard race there? I don't know. I yeah, came down heavy as well. on the Michael Scudamore trained do your job as well. Who who this seems like it might have been. Maybe it's a plan. Yeah. Not A, because I think they were hoping he might have turned up in Arkle. But if you go back 12 months, 
He was uh, running behind Belfast Banter and Grey Bond Company, over a trip too short for him. Uh, Aintree, watch that back, he's absolutely flying. Comes into it off a hard-fought handicap success. I think he'll go Do you off reckon that. that was too short for him? I feel like on his last start over two and a half miles, he was... It was too far. Yeah, he was all out to hold on there. Caught between trips. I mean... Well, it, if you're going to get it anywhere, it'll be here, wouldn't it? On a exactly, fact, and he, ground. you know, he, he's got some good novice chase form. He's he sort of run well in grade twos yeah. behind third time, like Edwardston, etc. Um, he's also getting five pounds from Manila Drama, and I don't think there's much between those two. What about Kiltili Briggs, who tried to sort of do a lot of the donkey work in the ultimate? Yeah, he shouldn't be good enough. Max he? McNeil and his and family are up there, and they they want a, you know, yeah. They've got a big party line. I thought the, the Ultima was like the the big aim for Kiltili Briggs, though. Sponsors a race, doesn't he? Yeah, and he has looked like it that wasn't so much of a problem. But yeah, dropping back a trip, he could be quite interesting as well. Jesus has been back on the chat and says, "Do your job. We'll do his job." I think Jesus might be right, or Jesus. <laughs> a, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I don't he's know. a tentative selection, but I don't think I can go with him. if enough rain comes and makes it a bit more testing. I'd, I'd go off do your job, but on good soft, yeah, I think he'll probably just have enough. Harry Harlow on the chat says, "Dave is not as funny as Chris Rock." Hmm. <laughs> okay. All right, do your job, Dave, and move on says Scott Barwick. <laughs> okay, can't wait to come back on this show. Um, all right, okay, where, where are we going next? All right, so what is the tip? Uh, do your job very tentatively. Three then for do your job, and Tom Sigal going for Il Rodoto as well, Bryony Frost. A lot of been said about Bryony this week, Tom. Have you noticed that? She's right down on the trains. Obviously, we've got the Robbie Dunn thing coming up. Have you, have you thought much about that? A lot being said there, isn't it? A number of trainers down and all that sort of stuff. No, I haven't thought about it at all. Mm. Sorry. A bit political for this show, maybe. But, yeah, um, that, that's, that's, for, that's for the Chris Cooks of this world. I just try and find which horse can run the fastest, day. Have we ever tried to get you to do anything political on you? No, I don't do it. <laughs> it sits on the fence, doesn't it? No interest. Horse racing is about horses running around a field. And the rest of you can leave that, the rest of it to the rest of I'll be more like Tom. Yeah, I don't like to get involved in the, the politics. You just said that Tom Siegel sits on the fence. Yeah, I do as well. You can tell you're well, young. actually... <laughs> I'm, I'm contradicting myself badly here, aren't I? But well, I'm used to this. Alex Mansfield said, "Big Dave O is the sheriff." All right, and with that in mind, oh, shall we go on? Then, I don't know. I could see myself as a bit you of a sheriff. cowboy hat on next time you're on. Listen, some people are some people are in the wrong job. Shall we go to the Coral Scottish National then at three thirty-five tomorrow? As Dave said, there is one out. Uh, the John McConnell trained streets of Doyen. Misses the party, but I don't think that would have made too much of a ripple on the market. The question is here, Dave, what price is the double? The one to the forecast, like we saw in your cold trophy at Kempton. You must be running for cover. Christian Williams, and he's already had a winner at the meeting. Kitty's light and win my wings. Yeah, Christian is in bullish form as well, unsurprisingly, after that winner in the last. He's up here on mass with all his owners. First time he's ever been here to wear as a trainer. He had the one two in the coral trophy at Kempton. He said then at Kempton that uh, the, the, obviously the runner out of the day, Kitty's Light beaten by Captain Wood that day. But Kitty's Light would come here on the same day. Obviously, he won the Ida with Win My Wings. Can it be a Welsh winner of this great race? I can't give you the odds on the one, two, but I can give you the odds on Christian Williams winning it for Wales. We were 11 to four about a Welsh winner. We're now going to be 100 to 30. But listen, there are 22 others running against Christian. He may be bullish, but I'm sure a few of these are. It's just worth reiterating, Dave, this in 2019, which was the last year of normality well, until this year, this was the fourth biggest betting race across the entire year, behind only the Grand National, the Cheltenham Gold Cup and the Derby. It is a massive deal. We're down on numbers slightly this year, as we said at the top of the show, because of the proximity to Aintree. But this is a massive deal and it will be again tomorrow. So we'll come on. I'll let the boys go through a few more of these contenders. I think it's wide open. I really do. I don't know what the guys think. OK, Dave, we'll come back to you uh, with your tip. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone loves having a go at this. Now, I am, I think, that if not number one, fan, oh, I think I, I thought I was before I came on this show, of Kitty's Light. I mean, I've been mm. banging on about him since he was four. When he won at Exeter, I think. In this... You know, Operation here. We have been banging his drum throughout, throughout, throughout. And it was he, back to form last time. I thought he would be going back for the 365 at the end of Sandown. He might still go there. He's entered there. But this was too big a prize for Christian to ignore. He's got the mayor in there as well. They're claiming seven off the mayor. But then Tom Segal came on the show as well. And it turns out, Tom, I'm not just a huge fan of Kitty's Light. No, I think he'll win. Uh, I think uh, Christian Williams is just absolutely... I think he's the best trainer of a staying handicap chaser we have. I, I don't think there's anyone. If you look through the records, he's had Welsh national winners, he's had Ida winners, he's had that Coral Trophy winner the other day. 
It's only been going for a few years, strictly a dancer, one about five on the trot. I don't think we've seen anything like the best of Kitty's Light. I think tomorrow is his big day. I think he's going to probably run away with it myself. I think he's probably a little bit too well handicapped for these. Also, he's only a few pounds higher than he was last year as a five-year-old when he was uh, second, probably a bit unlucky not to win the Bet365. I don't think this is the... I'm going to upset Dave here. I don't think this is the strongest Scottish national we've ever seen. By any stretch of the imagination. And this has been his target. I think the Irish horse, Stormy Judge, is dangerous. I don't worry about the ground. I can't believe any horse can't run on the ground up there that it was today. It was sort of the soft side of good. So um, I, I think he'll run well. And if there is to be a major upset, I think the horse that won the three-mile handicap on the card last year, one more flurry, is going to run well at a big price too for Ian Williams, who has his horses in very good form. He won that three-mile handicap chase on the card last year, and that has worked out really well. And that, that, that surely, when you win that, Tom, you're only thinking of one race 12 months later, surely. Absolutely. He had he, had, he ran in the uh, Labrook Trophy, and he had, then he had, what, four months off, had a warm-up in the Ultimate, ran really, really well for a long way. He was still in the first two or three, jumping the third last. That will have put him spot on for this. This will have been the target if, the ground isn't too soft for him, which I don't think it will be. I think he's going to run really well. He's a front runner and a brilliant jumper. There isn't that much. There aren't that many who's going to take him on in this. And I thought if he got out, got a, got a, uh, got a, got a lead out front, one more flurry at 25 to one would run a massive race. As I say, Stormy Judge is very dangerous. His mm. form in Avon last year has worked out really well. Uh, whether he'll quite stay, I don't know. He should do. He's a full brother to Mr. Fog Patches, who was second, third last year. He's a much better jumper than Mr. Fog Patches. Uh, so he's definitely dangerous. But uh, for me, I think Kitty's like will win, and the danger is one more flurry getting loose on the lead. Yeah, and uh, Dave, let's come to you, because to my eyes, he looks like he, well, is being backed, unsurprisingly, after 6pm this evening. And Tom's selections have got out there. But um, he was an anti-post mover as well, wasn't he? Yeah, one more flurry. It should be said, actually, I know it's 25 on the graphic, but the money has already come in. He's actually down to 18 to 1 there. Uh, I just want to go back to Kitty's Light. Obviously, Tom is tipping it up. He's on our graphic there at 13 to 2. But but we are going to go 8 to 1. And we haven't even got a graphic for this. Whoa. This is breaking news Whoa. from Coral Headquarters. 8 to 1 for up to 20 quid for Kitty's Light, if you fancy it, which I know I've got a feeling <laughs> Robbie might as well. Tom is, well, not, Tom is blown back in his seat there. Look, he's sprung back up. He didn't realise. Is that what you do, Tom, when you're off camera? Do you, do you sort of sit back and think, let these buffoons get on with it? I caught him off guard completely. It says I can have. Oh, 75p Tom mm. can get on. <laughs> let's not go there. Um, Robbie. That's uh, a decent price. Let's go big on this. Uh, Damon Moffat piece. has come onto the chat. Damon, we know well from, he's a big admirer of all the Racing Post um, shows. And he says, only mugs back in the Scottish and Aintry Grand National these days. Bookies benefit raises. Eight to one, Damon. About Kitty's light, you having a Yeah, laugh? not sure about that. I mean, yeah. I'd say bookies are offering outstanding place terms in these kind of races. So, where have there, you gone? There we are. Um, You've got to be with Kitty's, right? Well, what I wasn't, but Tom's made a good case, Dave's made a good case, and you sort of look at him thinking Kitty's light is the horse who could be just miles better. I mean, he's finished second, second in the Charlie Hall. I know, obviously, uh, Shan Blue is going to be third, last. really, wasn't he? Yeah, but I exactly. don't know what you mean. He's be, yeah, but I mean, this is a classy horse. I spoke to Christian yesterday. He said he's the only horse in the race that's that's placed, at, uh, you know, open company. Sort yeah. of, and I thought, well. I feels like he's been around for been ages, Kitty's Light, but he's only yeah. six. Yeah, well, he started off as a four. He's bred for the flat, didn't he? Yeah. We did, uh, uh, Pete Thomas today in your Friday paper did a great piece with him. Uh, we did a feature show with him as well. He's, he is one of the good guys, Christian, and that double that he had on either day and the gold trophy, yeah. that took some planning. and Outstanding. And Jack Tudor's back on. My worry with Kitty, Tom, is that he gets too far back in his races. He needs to be up there. And Christian doesn't think that the mayor can beat him but they're claiming seven off uh, with uh, with uh, Rob James of course who you know sided Burley everyone's talking about him uh, through uh, t uh, the Cheltenham Festival she won the Ida as she liked were you tempted at all or a little bit I mean she was she was really impressive up in trip there wasn't she but I think you know I'm a big believer in target training you know in people that train their horses for the one day I think that's that's a big thing she was she was clearly trained with the Ida in mind from way out this is where she's come Subsequently, it's not her big thing. Whereas I think this has been Kitty's light target all season long. I think this is the race he's been training him for. She, he will be spot on tomorrow. 
And if he can't win this, then I'll be... Well, he's, he's definitely handicapped. He can win off his mark, for sure. Things can go wrong. It's a four-mile two handicap chase, isn't it? Or whatever it is. Yeah. But, but I can't believe he's not... He's not got ten pounds in hand, and if he's uh, if he's if he's in the form that I expect him to be in, I think he'll win. Stormy Judge, as I pointed out, was, is is potentially dangerous on what he showed when he beat uh, Enjoy Dallen and Schoolboy Hours at Navan last season. That makes him dangerous. The others, I think, are are, are, are lacking a bit in the class on the class front. Yeah, and he's got Danny Mullins on, of course, for the far. He's stable. He come over and plunders these prizes. The ground is somewhat of a worry, I think. Uh, for, yeah, uh, for it is. Stormy I mean, it's all it's all soft and heavy in his in his uh, form book. But mm. like, yeah, I mean, long term planning. I mean, he's definitely this is definitely his long term plan. I get that suspicion. Um, he, this is my selection, actually. I mean, as Tom points out, he's got that form with Enjoy Dallin and Scoreboy Owls. That's worked out spectacularly. Um, you know, he's obviously a brother to Mister Fogpatches who was third last year, unfinished business. Um, bit of an eye-catcher in the Leinster National last time. And intru- interestingly as well, the British handicap hasn't raised him from his Irish mark. So that's all. I just quite like Irish horses who are running off the same rating. So, uh, yeah, Stormy Judge for me. But, mm. I mean, Kitty's Light as well is going to take a bit of beating. I was going to say to you, Dave, right at the top of the show, could we see a new favourite in the Scottish National? You, obviously, your traders think yes. And could that well be Stormy Judge? I mean, it certainly could the way the, the market's going at the moment, although given the positivity from Tom here behind Kitty's Light, I'm, I'm less certain now Kitty's Light will be deposed as favourite. Earlier today, I was asked what could start favourite, and I thought the ferry master might, such was the momentum behind him. Cool Mix has been a big mover in the last 24 hours. Uh, I thought Peter Faye's other runner, um, History of Fashion, was interesting. Was going was well fancied for the Ida, actually. Mm. Came down quite early in that uh, I thought the Wolf, if he could have a clear round, he stepped up to be second in the Edinburgh National, I think, last time. I, I, I get what Tom's saying about perhaps not the highest quality renewal of this and say with Aintree so close, that's understandable. I thought there were plenty in here with chances. But then you hear someone like Tom make such a positive case for Kitty's Light. I did a, a preview show with Christian Williams last night and desperately sort of pushed him and pushed him and you know, picked between his pair and he was having none of it. Now, I get that as trainer. He says, look, I'm running them both because I think they can both win. Uh, and of course, he'd settle for a one-two, I'm sure. But I, he couldn't pick between his belt. I don't know. I, I, I think it's a really intriguing race. And I have to take issue with the, 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 the guy that messaged in earlier saying that the national in this race are only for whatever he said, you know, if I use the word he used. But it's not. It's a race that, that punters across the board love. And that's reflected in the turnover. I think Christian went up with uh, the owner of Wing My Wings, didn't he? So he's probably being very diplomatic. <laughs> was he still wearing a horrendous shirt when he did that that preview? He looked like he was going to go and do karaoke when I spoke to him yesterday. He was he had him all self ready. He, lo- he looked like a sort of young Tom Jones in a weird way. His hair was all over the place. He looked like a lockdown sort of haircut, Dave, as well. I, th- I think calling a Welshman a young Tom Jones is nothing more than a compliment, Dave. I don't think Christian would take any exception to that at all. I have to remember where I was straight, before though, I went for that. Hair's a bit straight to be Tom Jones. Well, he, he, yeah, like it's I say, he, curly. he looked like he was ready to party, yeah. let's put it that way. And he's had one run up in the 5.15 today. I forget the name of it now. Um, Strong as my bow or something, wasn't it? What was it called? Let's have a look. String, String to, to my bow. bow. Yeah. yeah. Rob Way to tipped it today in the paper and it absolutely hosed up. He's got a runner in the 4.45 as well called Groom Adu Dairies. Not sure what that price is at the moment, uh, t- t- uh, David Cole. Maybe you can check it out, but I know he really, really fancies that one as well. It was one about 10s or under telly this morning. Have you got a price on that, Dave, in the 4.45? Yes, I certainly have. Uh, Mr. Daniel Ellis rides the 9 to 1 shot. The 9 to 1 shot. And like I say, it is well fancy. That, then, is the preview of the Coral Scottish Grand National. Good luck wherever you're playing. Not for some, we hear, but I think everyone out there is looking forward to 3.35 tomorrow and having a stab. Good luck wherever you go. Take advantage of all those place concessions out there. One more race from air, then, before we have a look at a couple of very interesting races at Newbury as well. And it is the Tenants Handicap Hurdle. Two mile five. Last year's winner, Bass Rock, is in the race for Ryan the Maniac Mania. Grand National winning rider, Sandy Thompson as well. And uh, he's got another £15 on his back, Dave, but your compilers think he's probably going to win again? Yeah, this is another trio. And Aurora Thunder is in there at 5-1 at the moment, but did run here and didn't get round today. So whether you'd have to be a doubt over him running or not, I don't know. So it's another, I'm using that word a lot today, but this is another trappy contest made all the more so by the presence of Aurora Thunder at the moment. For, of course, last year's Scottish Grand National 
winning Connections. Uh, mighty Thunder, of course. Uh, I spoke to Connections of Bass Rock earlier today. He's had a little wind up, actually, which doesn't show up on the court. It's called a tie back. It's, not, it's sort of like a mini wind up. Mm. And they don't think he can't win, but I, I think they thought he was a bit surprised when they saw the price, which led me um. to Enemy Coast Ahead, who was also in the race last year, finished sixth behind him when he was chasing a hat trick. And I think he's all been geared around this race again for the McNeil family. I, I think we're going to see a bit of a plunge on this chapter. I watched him back at Newbury last time by a dash or drasher. This is obviously easier. He's got a swing in the race with Bass Rock. This would be one of my stronger plays on the card for Ollie Murphy and Adrian Heskey. Nice. Five pound lower as well. Nice. Can't complain. Just that. Um, nice. Take it, wouldn't you? <laughs> oh, to be I'll, the anti I won't be backing him, though. Yeah, you like Hunter's uh, Call, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I like Hunter's Call. Cool. Um, this rider, Lewis Stones, is good value for his five. Odds. He's one from four. Four of his last seven rides. That's pretty pretty impressive form from the Hot. press. So, I mean, Hunter's call is effectively run off 137. And you look, you go for his form. I mean, he's finished third in a couple of grade twos this season. He was unlucky not to win the international hurdle, I thought. He, he looked the lightest winner for a long way. Um, just feel like two miles around Sandown, one mile, seven and a half furlongs around Haydock. It's a little bit sharp for him. He got found out behind Goshen uh, Sandown last time. But I, I think every horse did in that race, really. Um, he's back over two and a half miles. That's more his trip for me. It's just the two mile hurdle division is just so weak, and that's why these kind of horses are, are running well in these races. But uh, yeah, off 142, I know he's 12 years old, but he's got enough ability for my liking. Back in a handicap, he's the class horse, and he's uh, 11 to 2, so that'll do for me. All right, you sit back and enjoy that. I can tell you're really enjoying your. You, know, it's you, all right, you just come from the gym, isn't it? You were stretching. Yeah, a I bit did. There, I, I was going to get a shower in, but ran out of time. Thanks for that. Uh, okay, Tom, <laughs> uh, Bass Rock uh, might be vulnerable, say Connections. Do you think so, or should we not listen to that whatsoever? Uh, this is ridiculously difficult, isn't it? You've got two horses that ran today, uh, mm. Aurora Thunder, Elvis Mail. You've got two horses trained by the same bloke, Enemy Coast Ahead and Elvis Mail. You've just told us that Bass Rock's had a wind operation that no one knows about. And Getaway Trump can't get put one leg in front of the other for the last uh, six months. So... Uh, I'm going to do a Mr. Babbage uh, uh, and stick out of this one. Yes, you are allowed to do that, of course. You don't have to play in all these races, safe gambling and all that sort of thing. Nice nod from Tom towards that. Dave Stevens, did you have a particular fancy? Uh, no, just through sheer process of elimination. The fact that Ray Anderson Green loves having a winner here, the lamest ever reason for backing the horse. But I thought Bass Rock, uh, and I'm not going to let your, your pessimism from speaking to them put me off. I'm going to pretend that I didn't hear that. Well, they were probably hoping that you were hearing that and they might push him out, of course. They like to, yeah, but like, like I say, they, they wouldn't be surprised if he won, but, and he is one of Ray's nicest horses, I think. But uh, anyway, that's the word I got. So, all right, that's Air. Who's enjoyed that preview that we've given you here on In The Know then? Keep your selections coming in. We want to know what wins the Scottish National. I'm seeing the, see what I can find on the chat. Um, lot, oh, s- <laughs> Iron Smiler says, Smithers, release the wasps. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're forever now going to be known as the Wasp Man, I think, Dave. Is it? Well, to be fair, I've been called a lot worse. So, I mean. A new Marvel character out there for us, Wasp Man. You've got Ant Man and all that thing, aren't you? All right, okay. I have to be careful with some of these things in the chat. But uh, lots of chat talking about the Irish horses for Vahi as well. Major Dundee is a horse that seems to have come in for a lot of love as well. Keith Melrose has been backing that one out, our betting editor. So, all right, lots of, lots of action going on on the Coral Scottish Grand National at 3.35. But there's also a meeting at Air. Everyone tends to forget about this meeting, don't they? It gets overlooked slightly. But Newbury. Newbury, sorry. But uh, it says my producer. It's the first time I've had him on my ear this show. I was going so well until then. all right. Um, but the 2.25 at... Uh, it's the 2.45, sorry. It's the Mayor's Race. We'll get to that. After a veterans chase. Where do you sit with these veterans chases? Do you like them? I don't really like them, to be honest. Um, I mean, I like horses who are on the upgrade and... I mean, it's kind of nostalgic seeing all that you've seen running for six years, but you don't really learn too much new for, mm. for the future. Tom, big fan of the veterans, no doubt you are. Yeah, love them. Love them, really like them, really enjoy them. I think they're great for the, for the game. I think we love seeing all these old boys come back time after time, and I think they get, provide great betting opportunities because simply back the youngest horse in the race, it seems to win, they seem to win all the time. If you've got designs on upgrading from the anti-postman to mm. price-wise, you, you might want to listen to this sort of thing going forward. The, the public love them. I get what you're going to have to tip <laughs> on these horses, all right? Uh, yeah. Before we find out what your tip actually is, let's go to Dave Stevens because there looks like there might have been, it, it looks wide open, Dave, but Bermeo for Harry Fry, it, I mean, he's absolutely chucked in if he can come back to anything like his best. Can the Fry work his magic? Yeah, been a real bit of a change in the market here. First, Figaro was favourite uh, when I 
looked at this race earlier this afternoon. La Cavza Nostra. Tom, you can probably translate that from the Italian. What does La Cavza Nostra mean? Why me? I know nothing. I'm, well, because you're the most educated. I mean, I'm, I'm about Hang to on. offend well, Dave and Bobby, but you're Hang on. the most educated. Grammar school educated. <laughs> Uh, that, that was a bit of a curveball, Tom, and you, perhaps you've deserved one after the whole season of doing in the nose so far and bowling them all at Stevens. I think. I'm not getting anything up on Google for the meaning of La Cosa Nostra. Isn't it something to do with the Mafia? Uh, La Cosa Nostra is. Oh, yeah, it? OK. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so... There's my education yeah. shown in one small... The Sicilian snippet. Mafia. Oh, is it Sicilian Mafia? Yeah. And you've, well, you've tipped it anyway. We've gone awry uh, here on this. It was all going I so have, well yeah. until Newbury. Back the youngest horse, as Tom says. Um... He's 10. That's not that old for a veteran, is it? And I was noting earlier, he's only running six chases. So he's open to a bit of improvement. He's won three of his last five. Not, un not often the word unexposed yeah, comes out Yeah, that's an unexposed sphere. veteran, if you ask me. All right. Um, I mean, just, yeah, I mean, he had about 900 days off the track. But he's come back in, in pretty good spirits. He pulled up on his first start back, and then he's won in pretty good style at Hereford. Um, just three starts ago. I mean, he's given weight and a beating to Lord de Manil. That's off the mark 118. That's pretty good form. Cheap uh, pieces on. Cheap pieces on. Uh, he's only gone up three pound for the Hereford victory. He is at, oh, he's seven to two there. I was hoping for a little bit, but maybe you can boost that one for us, Dave. I don't know. Oh, there you go, Dave. C can you boost the unpronounceable or unthinkable, the Cavstra I'd I maybe want a bit more juice than seven to two, but I think he's probably the most likely winner. Well, you've missed the boat, Robbie, because he was considerably bigger earlier, but I'm not boosting anything that's got a mafia connection. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's where Dave's on this show. I like Bermeo, Tom, who's ridden by Brian Carver. I just think, I, I, again, I'm looking for horses that are have got the back class and things like that in this sort of race. And I wonder whether the last time out winners have showed their hand a bit much coming into this. Sure. I mean, he's absolutely chucked in. And Harry Fry, the switch, is a big positive. I've got Carver on my side there. Are you going for this first and foremost? And in these conditional riders' races, how much impetus does price-wise put on them? I like the jockeys are one of my big things. Uh, Brian Carver is one of the best conditional jockeys. I can't fancy Bermeo, though, Dave. Sorry, at the price. Eight feet and 81 lengths last time. I'm sitting as a rider the time before that and pulled up. And you want me to take five to one? No, thanks. Uh, I get where you're coming from. Very, very well handicapped on old form. Switch to Harry Fry, but... Uh, that's just not my type of bet, back in horses that haven't shown anything for loads of times. Uh, first figure I thought I had a chance, one I quite like, is Indy 5. I know he's a bit older than the rest, but I'm so impressed with him the other day in a, in, over the course and distance. He's just one of those horses that takes other horses out of their comfort zone. He's a bit nutty at the start. You've got to get him, if he gets, if he gets, if he gets a good break and gets out in front of this lot, they'll find it hard to pick him up. He goes a really strong, good gallop, and he gets people out of their comfort zone. So I'm an Indy 5 man, but... Uh, I get the Cav shirt Nostra, not so keen on Bermeo. And uh, I also thought that the old back class of no comment was made him quite interesting too. But it's Indy 5 for me. Well, the last time no comment ran, 130 uh, days ago, you talk about uh, decent riders. He's got um, Kevin Brogan on, of course, JP McManus uses copious times. Um, he's, he is the best of the best, I think, isn't he, at the moment? At the swing of the weights, you'd think that no comment ought to reverse that form, but I'm with you. He's he's a bit of a thinker, isn't he, no comment? He yeah. tends to throw him away a little bit. And, yeah, it's interesting from the lead. I don't know if he'll have much pressure on the lead from that. You Maybe yeah, Valadon. He's got a few in there. Psychedelic Rock and Valadon can go from the front. But uh, I just don't think they'll be able to... I mean, if Indy 5 gets in the same rhythm that he did last time, it'll be, it'll be, it'll, it'll be hard to catch. Mm. Yeah, uh, th these staying chasers, when they get to the front on that, you know... Any ground, especially at Newbury, they are hard to catch. And everyone loves the veterans because we've done that as much as any other race on the card. Yeah, Tell that was quite enjoyable, actually. Maybe I was yeah. a bit harsh on the old boys. Dave, did I get a tip from you? No. Uh, I thought first figure, obviously, on the hat trick. I'm hoping the £9 rise won't be enough to stop him. And I was just drawn to no comment. It's been off since a busy summer through sort of autumn. Hasn't run since before Christmas. I, Kevin Brogan uh, was an interesting jockey booking, but maybe... Uh, with those colours, you're always looking for something that isn't there. But I just thought no comment was worth a second look. Mm, you could definitely see him having a say, I think, if it's all there after a break. Uh, let's go to the chat. A Devo, one of our regular contributors, says, uh, cannot believe we're getting 11 to 2 about first Figaro. Phoenicia on a hat trick. Keep it simple, basically. And we've had Jesus. We've now got Zeus in the chat as well. He says, Valadon. Yeah, I guess so. Who is he? The Greek, all the way. Greek God of? 
Well, he is the... I mean, let's not go yeah, there. top dog, yeah. Your intellect all of a sudden. We're about to find you out. Valadom is too big each way, should make all. Well, Tom's told you there might have been a bit of pace pressure there. That is the 210 then. Uh, a televised race tomorrow at Newbury. Veterans and conditional handicap riders. Good luck wherever you're playing. If we swayed you one way or another. Now we've got to go on. Final race of this evening's In The Note. 2.45, Newbury. It is the Mayor's Final, Limited Handicap Grade 2. Tom, I'll come to you with this one. I'm a huge oh, fan right. of Speech Bubble, basically. These horses that uh, find themselves in this race are these mares. They try to make their way into graded company. It's basically for those that don't make the cut, isn't it? She very nearly beat a Cheltenham Festival winner last time out. Yeah, clearly she's got a good chance. The only thing is she's got to give all that weight away, hasn't she? Uh, as you say, she nearly, she nearly beat the Cheltenham Festival winner. She... Improving stays. What's not to like? Oh, actually, I like the uh, the second in there, Corey's courage. I just thought that she's unbeaten, isn't she? And mm. she just 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 don't know how good she's going to be. I thought she was really impressive the other day. I think Ollie Murphy thinks she's well handicapped, stable in form. It's not a race I've ever had a good record in. I think it, I think lots of trainers sort of target their horses at this, and you sort of don't, you know, they sort of hid their light under a bushel for some time. So you could see the the skeleton ones down the bottom running really well at big prices. But on what I saw last time, I thought Corrie's courage might be the one. I thought she was really strong at the finish and she looked like she had a lot more to give. Thanks then, Tom. Yeah, Dan Skelton's interesting in this because he's won it with Roxana, isn't he? Um, who carried the same mark to victory as Speech Bubble did, 130 basically. She's a massive great mare, Speech Bubble. She can be something over fences, I think, uh, down the line. But she can be a bit keen, so hopefully there'll be a, a bit of a pace on. Tips all over the place, I bet, for this race. Yeah. Are you I, I are like... you more of a fan than the mares, I really like... are veterans? Uh, well, I just I like Grade Twos, and this is all right. This is a Grade Two. Um, Who wins the Grade Two? I've just, I quite like three different horses, and when you like three different horses, maybe you shouldn't get too involved. But I have I've already backed Nina the Terrier uh, for one reason that she is now seven pound better off with Speech Bubble for their Sand Army interview factor in Brian Carver's claim, and. I thought she just got stuck in the heavy ground there. Well, she that's the issue, isn't it? Well. If she hadn't gone to Cheltenham, she'd be favourite. Yeah? yeah, exactly. And but I mean, she was beaten a long way, and she she was you know, she was obviously well beaten. I I like to think she didn't have a hard race there. The ground as it did ease there, and it was more good soft by the time the first. This got just out. looks like proper Plan Z, I think, for me. With Do you think? Area, yeah. I, I mean, I get it, but um. Uh, she was a double figure price at the time. I thought that was interesting. Uh, Holly Hartingo is also interesting, I think. Um, she missed an engagement. She was quite well backed, actually, for a listed race over three miles for mares in March. She didn't go for that. So, presumably, they had a rethink and thought, let's get her in this grade two. She's only off 120. She was actually unbeaten up until she ran at Hereford over two miles. Yeah, That's that was against bit, her, wasn't it? Yeah, that was a bit short for her. She's a two and a half miler. Uh, that hunting them forms a bit hill finch that looks quite good. That mare's come out in one since. Um, I just feel like she's probably quite well handicapped, 120. So Holly Hartinger for me, but Corey's courage is the other one. Um, I mean, you're talking about an unbeaten mare who she's won in the style of a mare who hasn't. There's been plenty left on the bonnet the way she has won, I think. And I'd imagine she is much better than Mark 117. So I mean, maybe this could be one to have two or three each way plays in. So they're the three for me, but I'm gonna. Of my main selections, Holly Hartingo. As Tom said, for a trainer that's definitely targeted this, Alistair Ralph with Holly Hartingo. Dave, OK, how's the market going to go here? Speech bubble surely goes off fab, doesn't she? Yeah, definitely. That uh, of second to Love Envoy, the subsequent Chatham Festival winner, is strong enough. If she's good enough to carry this weight, then I think she'll def uh, justify that favouritism. But Corey's Courage, I can see, again, being popular. Punters love a horse with a big row of ones by its name. We still don't know how good this one is. First time in a handicap. Uh, I tried to be clever at air today and then promptly watch seven favourites win. This is one where I'm not going to be too clever. I think the first two in the betting, I'm going to be playing both of them. Dutching those two, as Ross would say. I don't miss Ross. I thought I might miss him, Dave, but I don't. We shall, we shall end the show now on that, I think, shall we, Dave? That's very kind of you to say. Uh, OK, that is it. That's race preview time done. We've got about five minutes to seven. The timings have been right. I'm quite happy. I like the blue. I'm, I'm loving life. I think this is, this is something it's I could do. good fun, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's get Ross yeah. to have something else on. Well, I'm delighted to say, actually, while we're on that, uh, and you mentioned the great man, he will be back. Wednesday night, Dave, you're coming back with Tom as well, no doubt. And 
I love Ross Briley. I'm so glad he's back next week. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, let's hope that Simon Clare's in the chair as well. Uh, <laughs> you're you're going to be back Wednesday night, Thursday night and Friday night in the lead up. Of course, talking everything ain't tree before the big one, right? Absolutely, yeah. Forget the Channel Festival. The best spring jumps meeting is Aintree next week. Three days up there. Ah, oh, come on. I know that's upset everyone. But listen, I was stung by a wasp last time. What, what, <laughs> what else can go wrong? Smithers released the wasp, one of the greatest uh, <laughs> uh, chat interactions we've had. We've had someone else has come on. And who was it? He said, Tom, you're still the main man, someone says on there. Tom, I agree with that. Look at him. Look, look. Oh, there you so are. You're casual. back on, Tom. The, the draw's so finished now, man. <laughs> And I thought I thought I thought I'd done my bit. Uh, <laughs> whoever said I was the main man, he's spot on. Well done, my friend. There you go. Tom, Absolutely. do you ever work on a desk, or do you always work on your sofa? Sofa. Dear, it can't be good for your back, mate. That. Well, I don't know. The way you're sitting, I think Actually, you're going to need to see a chiropractor soon, aren't you? Bit, yeah. And we've had Robbie as well. It is nap time, though, guys. Before we go on any more, um, okay. Let's. Someone's just said Stevens ninety nine says David judge a good a judge of character as the prize boosts. I, I assume that means that they've been quite good this show, Dave. Can you give me a nap, Dave Stevens? All the races, uh, what is it, eight we've previewed. Are you going Air Newbury? Somewhere completely different. What are we saying? I'm going in the 150 at Air. Dusa I'm taking on with Doyen Breed around the 7-1 to mark. I don't know, Tom, are you on an angle or is that picture above your head on an angle? <laughs> it's got to be the camera for me. The leaning tower <laughs> of Seagull. <laughs> the, camera, the camera's having a mare. <laughs> there we go. You've got a lot of DVDs there, mate. You're not going to get much use out of those nowadays, eh? There's a lot of DVDs there. Oh, no. Sort of dead technology. Been, they've been there for 20, probably before you were born, Robbie, those, those DVDs. Yeah, producer chance. Kieran just said something in my head. I didn't quite get that, Kieran, but I know Kieran's been to visit Tom, so I imagine it was something <laughs> about the interior there. Before we get Tom's nap, I'm going to end on Tom's nap, actually. 225, Anna Benina, Scottish champion hurdle. Uh, I know the money's come for a little bit. And I just think this is her, her cup final. And I think she's got her ground for once and she'll go very, very close. Robbie Wilde yeah, is nap. I'll accept that. Uh, I'll take Malice Stick in the 115 at air. As I pointed out earlier, um, brilliant run behind All Mankind last time. I know, she's, I know he's beaten 19 lengths, but, you know, travelled much better than the finishing result suggested. Drops two miles. I think it'll go very well on that. For Brian Hughes. Yep. The price boost to get yeah. a double. And, you know, he might have a double with Barrichello later on, so... All right, Eight okay. to one about that. Happy days. All right, you can bad. actually come back. Finally, a bit of advertising from you. It's only taken an hour. Okay, drum roll, please. Tom Siegel, what's the nap? Well, well, Kitty's Light is obviously the the most my, my strongest fancy. But if you're looking for one away from that, because we've been through that, there was a horse running in the 135 at Newbury, and it's called Mot a Mot or Mo a mm. Mo. Uh, for just joined Sam Thomas when it won at Worcester at the start of the season. It beat. Uh, any harm in asking of John Joe O'Neill's that has won twice since narrated 140 something. It beat Black Poppy of Kerry Lee that is won twice since just got beaten a short head of today. And it beat a horse by about 50 lengths of Philip Hobbs that has won twice since has narrated 114 or something. Motta and Mark runs for Sam Thomas. First run, 114 tomorrow. He is undoubtedly very, very well handicapped on that Worcester form. The question is, you're taking a bit of a risk because he's had a tongue, he's had a wind operation and it's first run for Sam Thomas tomorrow. But if he's in that form, I think he can beat Punctuation, who is the sort of a bit of a steamer in the 135 at Newbury. Yeah, Punctuation was supposed to go at Warwick early in the week, wasn't it? I don't know whether he'd run quickly. There you go. You heard it here first. There are your weekend naps from the four of us. Dave Stevens, north of the border, your big day tomorrow. Enjoy it. And we look forward to seeing you back for entry next week. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, gents. Been a pleasure. Good stuff. Tom Sigal, we shall now let you go and prepare yourself. What's the weather going to be like in Reading tomorrow for your big game? Do you put the layers uh, on, Tom? We're away. We're at Barnsley, so I can't make it. It's too far for me, Barnsley, but it's Stoke at home on Tuesday night, so I'm, I can go to that, and then I'll be ready for the uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday shifts with Mr. Stevens. And Mr. Ross Briley. Thank you, Tom, for joining us, uh, Pricewise Supremo. The anti-postman, sort of next best, isn't it? If Been we can call you that. But, uh, uh, the nap, I'd say. You're, you are progressing with every run on these shows, I I'd have like to, to think say. so, yeah. Number two, uh, number three next Thursday, so look forward to it. All right, great. So you're back next week as well. I am, yeah. Who for, knew? For All right, Exciting. great stuff. I've been Dave Orton. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, gamble responsibly. You've been watching In The Know. Enjoy the sport. <laughs> <laughs>